Right then guys, it's PSL here for the rundown of the middle of the 2002 season. It's the fifth year in the Stewart's Manager career mode on Grand Prix World and finally we're in contention for both championships. Heinz Aldfensen currently leads the driver standings, albeit with Celso Moreira staggeringly in second and only two points back. Moreira's teammate Fizzy Keller is third and more than a race win behind, whereas our other driver Wurtz is nearly two race wins away from the top. With Williams already 30 points behind Ferrari, the Constructors' Championship is a two-way fight between Stewart and the Prancing Horse, with them having a marginal advantage of just four points. There's a lot to get through before we head off to Monaco, starting off with ourselves and Benetton both announcing works deals with Mercedes at the same time. For us that's status quo, but Benetton have upgraded from their existing deal which is a partner arrangement with Ford. It also means there's a question mark over McLaren since now they can't retain their works Mercedes deal, they'll either have to downgrade to a partner deal or get engines from someone else. In other news, Juan Pablo Montoya will be leaving Jordan as a test driver to join Salba in a race seat, meaning he'll be on the grid and racing for the first time since he left Tyrrell earlier on in the career. Finally, and predictably, Jean Todd won the Manager of the Month award for the Spanish Grand Prix and Eddie Jordan was named the worst F1 manager. As far as I'm concerned though, the biggest news is that our first chassis upgrade of the season is ready, upping the rating from 60 to 66%. Monaco may not be a power circuit, but it'll be the first place where we debut our fully upgraded Mercedes engine, which means our car should be almost untouchable by now. Next year will be even better since I confirmed a works fuel deal with Shell for next season. Unfortunately, our weakness right here, right now, compared to the other top teams, is our chassis. And whilst we may have improved it, Monaco is so chassis dependent that we qualified in 3rd and 8th. Against all odds, Mika Salo for Tyrrell took pole with Esteban Tuero for Williams in 2nd. Williams were the best team overall as Hill qualified in 4th and ahead of Moreira in 5th, with Montemini splitting the two Ferraris. What this race throws up again is the topic of chassis rating, something which has never fully made sense in the past, but I think I might have gotten to the bottom of it. As I showed a few videos ago at the end of the previous season, on this version of the game I'm running, the chassis rating for the team I manage is always determined solely by the chief designer's rating. That's proven fact, but for the other teams that doesn't seem to be the case since Ferrari won the Constructors' and Drivers' Championships last season. Sure, having Michael Schumacher in the team helped them a lot, but their 2001 chassis was designed by a two-star rated chief designer, so should only have been rated 40%. Compare that to Benetton or McLaren who had four-star designers, so should have had an 80% rated chassis, and the difference between a 40 and 80% rated chassis is enormous but they were both beaten by Ferrari. I know on some versions of Grand Prix World the chassis rating is determined by a combination of the chief designers and technical directors rating and whilst that isn't the case for any team I'm with, it might be true for the AI controlled teams. Last season Ferrari had a chassis designed by a 2 star designer but a 4 star technical director which would balance out to a 60% rated chassis which is at least respectably good. It would also explain why they did so much better than Minardi who were the only other team with a 2 star designer but they only had a 3 star rated technical director. I still won't take anything away from Ferrari's and Schumacher's performance last season as it was still borderline miraculous that they won both championships considering Benetton and McLaren had a 4 star chief designer and technical director, so almost certainly had 80% chassis unless both of them screwed up the design process which seems unlikely. Also, if the other teams do have their chassis ratings decided based on the designers and technical directors, then Williams would have had a 70% rated chassis, better than Ferrari and Stewart. Yet, 
Not only did Ferrari beat Williams last season, but so did we. Anyway, all of that could sort of explain how Ferrari did so much better than expected last season and why Salo for Tyrrell was the fastest at Monaco this season. That's because not only did Tyrrell have a 4 star rated chief designer, but they're the only team to have teamed that up with a 4 star technical director as well. So they should have an 80% rated chassis, whereas Benetton and Williams would only have a 70% rated one. It all falls apart again though since Ferrari again had only a 2 star designer and a 4 star technical director, but this year they don't have Schumacher propping up the team. Somehow, with a chassis which should be at best as good as ours, Moray was still qualified in 5th and ahead of his teammate Fizzy Keller, who both were faster than the current drivers championship leader, Frentzen. What's interesting is that last year Jordan didn't have a technical director but had a 3 star chief designer. The lack of a technical director developing their chassis could explain why they're so laughably slow since a 60% rated chassis could be dragged down to be only 30% rated or maybe 40% if they had an emergency nameless 1 star rated technical director drafted in. To be fair to them, they do at least get to start the Monaco Grand Prix, unlike David Coulthard, who was caught using illegal driver aids. Despite what we saw in qualifying, Moreira won the 2002 Monaco Grand Prix, with Frentzen in 2nd and Fizzy Keller in 3rd, with Tyrrell only claiming 4th and 5th. That's an amazing result for the British team given where they were in 1998, and Montemini finished 2 places further up than he started, but Sarlo lost the lead at Monaco, the easiest track to defend your position, and he dropped all the way to 5th. It's better than Tuero though who he shared the front row with since he didn't even finish the race, but half the grid didn't see the chequered flag for the second race in a row. Verts retired meaning we dropped points relative to Ferrari with brakes costing him in Spain but an accident taking him out of the Monaco Grand Prix. Minardi predictably had a double retirement since reliability has long been a problem for them. But Jordan and Williams also saw both drivers leave the race early, which is a shame for Williams since they were looking good to score some decent points. I can scarcely believe I'm saying this, but Celso Moreira is leading the drivers championship again, having beaten a genuine F1 driver of Heinz Hald Frentzen around Monaco. It's even worse news for Stewart in the constructors championship since we're 12 points behind Ferrari, but Interestingly, Tyrrell are now tied for third in the standings with Williams, a battle no one would have predicted in 1998. The unlikeliest of partnerships will be continuing for another year as Ferrari have renewed their works engine deal with Ford. Another unlikely set of circumstances is Barrichello lowering his standards to be Minardi's test driver, but Seemingly that will continue for another year unless Minardi have promoted him into a race seat which rarely happens in this game. I know I was the one to start Barrichello's career decline and I did it for money reasons but it's such a shame to see a proven decent driver and one who was brilliant for us in 1998 be relegated to being only a test driver and for Minardi of all teams. Finally, for the second race in a row, Eddie Jordan was slammed in the press and Jean Todd hailed as the second coming. In time for the Canadian Grand Prix, we improved the performance of our suspension and, just in case it rains, we'll have access to our all new and largely improved full wet tyres. Disappointingly, it turned out to be an entirely dry weekend at the Circus Gilles Villeneuve, kicked off by a quote, very dry qualifying session. Four different teams made up the top four positions with Fizzy Keller for Ferrari taking pole, Tuero for Williams second and then Verts as our leading man in third and ahead of Tyrrell's Montemini. Fortunately, Frentzen beat Ferrari's second man of Moreira with Hill, Schumacher, Coulthard and even Irvine for Minardi all beating last race's pole sitter. The bottom four teams all line up pair by pair with Jordan obviously at the back, but all four teams are at least two seconds slower than Collard, the slowest Minardi driver. 
The front two rows may have been made up of four different teams at the start of the race, but at the end it was a Ferrari 1-2 headed by Fizzy Keller with Frenson and Wurtz for Stewart in third and fourth. Williams were the only other team to score points and then Takaki finished just outside of the points and beat his teammate Michael Schumacher. Irvine split the two McLarens with Trulli, both Jordans and Herbert all ending the race three laps down and Herbert embarrassingly was beaten by both Jordans. Tyrrell went from a double points finish in Monaco to a double DNF just one race later with Sarlo the first one to exit the race. After the Canadian Grand Prix, Benetton confirmed a works deal with our tyre supplier Michelin. Then with McLaren unable to keep a works deal with Mercedes, they've gone into a partnership, not works deal, but partnership with Ford. Carrying on the stream of announcements from Benetton, they've signed 5 star rated chief mechanic Carl Gadden who will be leaving Ferrari as a result. Minardi driver Emmanuel Collard will join Jordan as either a test or race driver, it's uncertain, but with Montoya leaving the team, Collard could just be a straight replacement. Understandably, given their 1-2 finish in Canada, Jean Todd won the Manager of the Month award again, but Giancarlo Minardi was named as motorsport fans' least favourite manager, despite the fact that Irvine beat a McLaren, albeit only Pierre Rainbow, but still a McLaren, and Minardi had one retirement, whereas Tyrrell squandered a genuine chance to score points with both drivers not completing the full race distance. That's pretty much all the housekeeping done before the French Grand Prix, although this will be the first race where Stewart will have a maxed out Mercedes engine and every compound of Michelin tyre maxed out, as now the full wets are at their peak, along with the intermediates and the dry tyres. It's a bit of a shame then that the weather in central France was perfectly fine and dry all weekend, especially since I invested some setup points into wet weather in the hope that it would rain. Moreira took pole position, beating Verts by five thousandths of a second. Just to add to the unlikely results, Tuero beat Hill to start ahead of him on the second row with the highest skilled Ferrari driver and the best performing Stewart driver starting behind their teammates. Tyrrell lock out the fourth row with Emmanuel Collard for Minardi beating Takaki and Rainbow for Benetton and McLaren respectively. Irvine's the final driver in the 116s with Magnussen almost two and a half seconds back and the only driver in the 118s with everyone else behind him in the 119s apart from a Lacey with a 1 minute 20.2. Moreira held on to pole to win the 2002 French Grand Prix by 17 seconds over another unlikely podium finisher, Montemini. Fizzy Keller beat Frentzen to the line by half a second, with former world champions Schumacher and Hill rounding out the points places. Sarlo, Takaki, Rainbow and Collard complete the top 10 made up of mostly lesser skilled drivers who were all massively overachieving. Verts didn't make it to the end due to a driver mistake, which is increasingly unforgivable given how poor his finishing record has been this season and it's potentially costing Stewart the Constructors' Championship. Although at least we haven't sunk as low as Williams who threw away potential points as Twera was caught with an illegal driver aid, which could explain how he was faster than his championship winning teammate. Halfway into the season, Celso Moreira is leading the Drivers' Championship, with an 11 point advantage over Frentzen and 19 points over his teammate Fizzy Keller. After his surprise second place finish, Montemini's now ahead of both Wurt and Hill who are joint fifth in the standings. It's not just that championship we're lagging in as Ferrari are 32 points ahead of Stewart in the Constructors. Tyrrell are in third having passed Williams with Benetton in fifth and McLaren still in single figures. Apparently I stole the sponsor FedEx away from Minardi and on that note I signed a deal with Danker to fill up all of my sponsor slots for 2003 with half of the season still left to get bonuses from them. Ferrari will get their tyres on Bridgestone next year, McLaren their fuel from Elf and Williams will be carrying on their partnership with Ford. 
Also, just for a change, Peter Selber was named as the worst F1 manager, which is fair given that Herbert was the first retiree from the French Grand Prix and Sarazan the lowest finisher. Jean Todd got the Manager of the Month award again. In preparation for the British Grand Prix, I banked on it raining at Silverstone, but of course, the one time I wanted it to rain was the one time it didn't, as the heavy cloud cover and qualifying didn't turn into rain and Sunday was seemingly a glorious day. Ferrari and Stewart took the front two rows in qualifying with Fisichella beating Frenson and Moreira beating Wurtz. Tuero starts the race from fifth and amazingly five places ahead of his teammate. Then it's both Tyrrell sandwiching DC with Rainbow embarrassingly, as far as Damon Hill is concerned, ahead of the second Williams driver. Irvine beat Takaki with Collard just a few hundredths, slower than the fastest Benetton driver and nearly one and a half tenths quicker than Michael Schumacher. Down the back end it's business as usual for the bottom four teams as they're all in the 1 minute 27s whilst everyone else is over 2 seconds a lap quicker. Although Jordan are the only team in the 1 minute 28 and even their quickest driver Jean Alesi is over a second a lap slower than Jan Magnussen in 20th. Tragically the team's home race turned out to be a nightmare with Wurtz's engine failing despite the 10 out of 10 reliability stat and Frenson's gearbox broke. Embarrassingly, the only other driver to retire was Jordan's Redon, which means we're even worse than Jordan, and they're wrapped up in the home team bad luck spell as well since this couldn't be any more of a home race for them. Coulthard got caught cheating and regardless of whether or not Rainbow had a legal car, he wasn't quick enough to finish inside the top 6 anyway. Up at the front it was a Ferrari 1-2 with Fizzy Keller leading and then Tuero on the podium and only 4 seconds behind Moreira. Montemini beat Michael Schumacher and Damon Hill and that still sounds weird to say. Solo, Takaki and Rainbow just missed out on points. As it turned out, Frenson dropped a place before he retired so he was already on a downward trajectory before his gearbox let go. Meanwhile, Wurtz retired just four laps from the checkered flag and he was in second place ahead of Moreira before he retired. Through sheer chance, I discovered Ferrari's relatively new level 4 traction control system, which as it turns out was registered to the FIA a few races ago. Anyway, the team discovered it and Chief Mechanic Paul Diggins is skilled enough to copy it, racing point style. The whole thing turned out to be a massive anti-climax though since even though it's a fully legal system when on a Ferrari, in the eyes of the FIA it's illegal when on a Stewart, so they threw away everything we copied. Despite the fact Jordan are the slowest team on the grid, they somehow landed a team sponsorship deal with 5 star Winfried, which is even weirder since Jordan don't have a team sponsor this year. Ferrari did a deal with Total for Fuel on a partnership arrangement. It goes without saying but Jean Todd is the current favourite F1 manager and Eddie Jordan is the official worst manager which is odd given that Stewart had a double DNF so arguably I should have got that award. Since Stewart's title chances are slipping away I'm hoping that a second chassis upgrade, one that takes us past the 70% mark, will finally put us ahead of Ferrari. Off to Austria for round 10 and that new and improved chassis did the trick, as Wurtz stuck it on pole for the 2002 Austrian Grand Prix. Granted, Frenzen started the race in 6th behind Hill and Montemini, as well as both Ferraris, who are still the best performing team on average as they start the race from 2nd and 3rd. In an almost unbelievable turn of events, Pierre Rainbow is McLaren's fastest driver around the A1 ring as he qualified in 7th and two spots ahead of Coulthard, and Schumacher only just about beat his teammate, but both Benettons start the race outside the top 10, and therefore behind both Tyrrells. I know I keep repeating how bad Jordan are, but they seem to be getting worse, as Herbert did a 1 minute 14.5, Alesi was 1.4 seconds slower and Radon 1.5 seconds slower, and in the 1 minute 16s, Jordan are so bad that in an all dry regular qualifying session, Radon was only 3 tenths of a second away from being outside the 107% zone. 
the one time there's a rain affected session is the one time I didn't put any setup points into preparing for a wet track. Although I'm not sure it would have made a huge difference to Stewart's fortune since Damon Hill won and lapped everyone else in the field at least once. Fizikella, Wurtz and Coulthard all finish one lap down with Minardi and Tyrrell both finishing in the points thanks to Irvine and Salo respectively. Due to the damp track, championship leader Moreira didn't score any points, but did make it to the end of the race and in 7th place, beating Tuero in a Williams. Even with people finishing 5 laps down on Damon Hill, Jordan still couldn't get one of their cars to the end of the race, and neither could Benetton as they had a double retirement as well. Takaki went out due to a mistake, but Schumacher, who thinks to his skill in the rain almost certainly would have finished in the top 2, didn't get there due to an engine failure. Finally, Frentzen, who had a chance to get closer to the top of the Drivers' Championship with Moray were not scoring any points, didn't score any either due to a mistake on his part. After a streak of bad luck, Frentzen's fallen to third in the Drivers' Championship, behind both Ferrari drivers and importantly, 17 points away from Moreira. Irvine's two points mean both he and Minardi are given the courtesy of being listed in the standings, which is lovely to see, but Stewart are now exactly 50 points behind Ferrari and we're more under threat from Williams than we are threatening Ferrari. Frenson didn't even make it to the end of the sixth lap, but even in that brief time he still gained two places to be running in fourth, so almost certainly would have scored some points had he not messed up. Another backmarker team that somehow have landed a team sponsorship deal and it's yet another 5 star team sponsorship deal as Murano won't be backing the very marketable Benetton team but the currently forgettable Prost. That's an upgrade from a 3 star to a 5 star team sponsor for the team and I don't get how they've done it. In other news, Williams have secured a partnership deal with Michelin and Eddie Jordan was named the worst manager yet again. Staggeringly, Giancarlo Minardi is the official manager of the month, which I totally agree with since they scored two points in the previous race, but I didn't think this game would ever give that title to him considering how obsessed they are with constantly reiterating how amazing Jean Todd and Ron Dennis are. Off to Hockenheim for our engine supplies home race, and you could tell it was a dry qualifying session because Esteban Tuero was the second fastest and ahead of Damon Hill. But either side of them is Alex Wurtz in fourth and Heinz Held Frentzen on pole. Sort of out of nowhere, McLaren are the third quickest team, although they do have Mercedes engines which have a 9 out of 10 power rating by default. The lone Mugen Honda team of Minardi got Irvine into 7th and ahead of both Ferraris in 8th and 9th. Granted Ferrari have a Ford engine which is decent in a lot of ways except raw horsepower. But Williams have the same engines yet did much better. Tyrrell with the second most powerful engine by default beat the worst performing Ford engine team. Jordan shared the Peugeot engines with Tyrrell but didn't do any better than usual but Arrows did as they left behind the back group and were only fractionally slower than Benetton thanks to Arrows being smart and sourcing their engines from Mercedes. I didn't add any points to our wet setup since it was good by default which is lucky given the light rain race. So that's a perfect storm for us, extremely powerful engines, perfect intermediate tyres and a near ideal wet weather setup, which led to a 1-2 finish for Stewart. Frenson beat Wurtz by 53 seconds, but Wurtz was still half a second ahead of the wet weather specialist of Damon Hill. Meanwhile, Ferrari scored a grand total of 3 points, with Fizzy Keller in 4th and Moreira in 9th. Coulthard finished in 5th and Irvine scored points for the second race in a row, beating the likes of Tuero and Salo, who were likely worse in the rain than him. Five drivers retired, although the only sort of notable one is Emmanuel Collard, given how well his teammate did. The main story from this race though, apart from the 1-2 for Stewart, is Michael Schumacher and Benetton cheating. Sounds familiar. We've seen some shocking news in previous seasons regarding people who have, for reasons which aren't explained but seem to defy all logic, been sacked mid-season. 
Well, this year, possibly the biggest of all those has happened, as McLaren have dropped their loyal driver David Coulthard, with five races in this season still to go. Sure, DC has occasionally been beaten by Rainbow in qualifying, which is inexcusable. But in the races, Coulthard has always been the leading McLaren, especially in the recent wet races in Austria and Germany. It's the all-important race pace that means Coulthard's scored 8 points this season, whilst Rainbow hasn't scored any. Despite that, Ron Dennis has flied in the face of logic by dumping Coulthard and mid-season 2, which must have been costly, although his replacement is Mika Hakkinen, who's come out of retirement to help his former team out of the gutter. Getting Hakkinen in is a smart move, although I'm not sure how they convinced him in 2002 to come out of retirement. But why not drop Rainbow, who's clearly not of F1 standard, instead of DC, who scored 100% of the team's points this year? Before I headed off to the final race in this video, I upgraded our car's throttle by one in terms of performance, meaning all of the technology components in both cars are at least 4 out of 5 rated. Despite having a car that's fully focused on wet weather running and it being a light rain affected qualifying session, Stewart only locked out the third row of the grid. Although that may be in part due to the default setup for our cars being 9 out of 10 in wet weather, so maybe that's the default for everyone and if so, we didn't really have much of an advantage by maxing it out. Then again, the front three were the rain specialists of Hill, then Schumacher, and then Mika Hakkinen on his return to Formula 1. Hill was in the 1 minute 21s, Schumacher the 1 minute 22s, and then Hakkinen the 1 minute 23s, with the mediocre rain drivers of Fisichella, Wurz and Frentzen in the 1 minute 24s. Eddie Irvine also made it within 107%, along with some who clearly snuck in based purely on having a decent car, including Pierre Rainbow, who was 3 seconds slower than his new teammate Hakkinen. He may have arguably the quickest car on the grid and be the current championship leader, but Moray were qualified in 13th and half a second outside of the 107% time, but was allowed to take part in the race. The FIA only prevented four drivers from taking part, and they are Laurent Redon, Stefan Sarazan, and then both Arrows drivers of Ricardo Rosset and Jan Magnussen, who are out of the running before the race even starts. Rather disappointingly for us, given how weak Ferrari are as a whole on a damp track, the race itself saw a bone dry circuit yet. Damon Hill still held on to first and narrowly bested Frentzen by just over two seconds. Thankfully, Frentzen finished ahead of Fizzy Keller with the pair beating the wet weather gods of Schumacher and Hakkinen, who stock inside the top six despite their mid pack cars showcasing exactly why they're the only two drivers to have won a driver's championship in this career save to date. Moreira claimed a single point despite being lapped, having beaten Sarlo, Irvine and Takaki. Of the 18 starters, only 12 made it to the end, with Verts going out due to a hydraulics issue. Our hydraulics is one of only two technology components that isn't 4 out of 5 in terms of reliability. Also, Rainbow was the first to retire and it was due to a personal error, further proving why Ron Dennis should have brought in the emergency driver of Hakkinen to replace Rainbow, not Coulthard. Granted, Hakkinen is very expensive and Coulthard isn't exactly cheap, but surely it's worth paying the salaries of two drivers who can score points rather than one decent driver and another who's extremely cheap but also incapable of scoring points and can barely even make it to the end of a race. There's only four races left in this season and the Drivers' Championship, which should comfortably be Frentzen's yet for a long time more Ray has been at the helm of, is now an incredibly close three-way fight. More was still on top with 62 points. Frentzen's closed the gap significantly and is now on 60 points, with Fisichella now truly in the hunt and only a further point behind. Damon Hill's firmly ahead of Wurtz, which is disappointing, although whilst Wurtz could have done a bit better this year, he's been bitterly unlucky. Even Andrea Montemini is only 5 points behind him. The Constructors' Championship is now seemingly out of our hands as Ferrari are on 121 points and Stewart 
are on 85. And with four races to go, I think outscoring the Scuderia by 36 points is unlikely. Williams are firmly in third and Tyrrell looks safe in fourth. But with Hacken and back at McLaren, the old schumacher hacken and rivalry is back in full force, as only six points separate Benetton and McLaren for fifth in the standings. And that's a wrap for this episode, and so I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to leave a like, comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next episode, which will be the penultimate one of this remarkably close 2002 season. So I'll see you guys then.